Is there any among us who hasn't been afraid of some point of our life? Afraid, scared, terrified, or even petrified? We have all felt fear and we all experience it as something unpleasant. But the real question is, is fear always our enemy or can there be moments when it's actually a friend? Well, when I was six, I just got a new tablet, so I was curious about literally everything. Somehow, while looking for movies, some horrors popped up. I watched the couple and you can imagine what happened next. I wish uh, I had nightmares and jumped at every strange sound. I didn't really know the difference between real life and movies at the time, so it was even harder for me to deal with what I'd seen on the screen. I didn't even tell my parents, so I was all alone overwhelmed with my fear. I should stop here to give you some facts from your sense. Actually, there are two kinds of fear. Irrational, fear of unreal things, and rational, which fear of real things. Uh, for rational fear, imagine primitive people encountering a lion. Coming face to face with a lion obviously causes a rational, very useful fear. How? There's part our brains, the amygdala, which detects the fear and sends signals to the body to run, hide, or even fight back. It suddenly fills up our heart body with a famous hormone, adrenaline. This is the so-called adrenaline rush, thanks to which primitive people were able to es escape or even fight the lion. Thank God for fear, right? Well, the problem is that the amygdala cannot understand what's real and what's not. Fear of scary characters in the horror movies is definitely in the second kind of fear, irrational. Since my young amygdala couldn't tell the difference, I was just as scared as I would be in a very real lion in front of it. But uh, I kept watching those movies, and I still do. Why did I do that? Am I crazy? What makes me watch them again and again? How many of you have, felt, have had the same experience with horror films? The answer is satisfaction. The adrenaline rush give us some kind of alertness, and the feeling we are invincible. So we get kind of addicted to such emotions, and that's why we keep watching scary movies. This is the upside. Fear, however, most of the times causes nausea, Sweating, shaking, headaches, high blood pressure, and the list goes on. These unpleasant effects are caused when today's people have some serious rational fears like bank taxes, fear of the future, or a favorite one, school grades and exams. Although we know that these are not real lines, the amygdala still sends the same signals and the usual adrenaline rush will give it about 10 times a day actually harms our health. So how can we deal with irrational fears? This is what I did with my fear of horror characters. The key was to find out that they're not real. Then I started ignoring them or I was this filled with friends and we made fun of them together. As for the most serious fears, I suggest organization and positivity. Control your spending and think about the positive possibilities for your future, not only the negative ones. You can also share your fears with pleasure with your, fr with your friends or you can break them down yourself and analyze them. This way you can understand that this is all fake. And whatever you do, always remember that everything you consider important actually isn't. Because problems lose half of their power when you see them for what they truly are. So we understand now that fear can be a friend when controlled. But if it manages to take control of you and your daily life, it can become your worst enemy. So every time you feel your head throbbing because of bad grades or an exam that you have to take, tell yourself that it's not lying and just move on.